Today I'm going to be talking about MRP and we're really going to focus on how to run the process and what all is involved with the process. Going into Epicor and just clicking the process MRP, choosing a few settings and kicking it off is not enough information or not enough to make sure that the process runs complete. We're going to take a look at all of the related processes that we should be running in addition to the process MRP to make sure that we get a correct list of jobs and demand so that we're not looking with blinders on, we see the whole picture. So running the MRP, let me go ahead and see if we can advance the slide here. First thing that we need to do when we look at MRP is what are our part classes and what is on the planning part class. Without having, we're not necessarily looking at all of the information. Now on the planning tab in the part class, let me see if I can go ahead and pull up an Epicor screen and throw this over the monitor. The planning tab in the part class is going to have a few settings regarding how production planning works for all the parts within a class. Now, anything that we maintain on the part class can also be maintained on the part itself. It's just doing it on the part, we'd have to do it one by one. If we keep it on the class, we're doing it for all the parts that are within that class. This may make it a little easier for us to look at. So when I pull up a class of products, such as aluminum here, I'm going to see on the part class site, what are the details at each plant. But up here, we're going to see some information for inventory settings, how we handle purchasing. What we're interested in is how we manufacture it and what do we need to look at. So the site that owns the part, the receive time, my reschedule in and out, which is if Epicor looks at a demand and says, hey, the customer moved their order up by one day, do I move all the jobs that moved need to move one day or do I ignore a reschedule suggestion of 24 hours? I may not want to reschedule my entire plant floor, so I don't want MRP to look at it and say, oh yeah, readjust everything. But I may, if the customer moves their order up five days, now I want to make sure that all of the jobs follow suit and all the sub-assemblies and sub-assemblies move with it. I've also got planning time fence. Now again, all of these settings can be managed on the part as well. We don't need to manage it on a part-by-part -part basis, but you do have the ability to do that. When I look at the part system, I'll go ahead and pull that screen up here, and I'm trying to make sure that, yes, I get a few forms that still pop up in Classic. I'm converting them over to the Kinetic, so at least we're in the new version. So when I turn around and pull up a manufactured part in here, over on the site tab, I have the ability to turn around and control what's going on for that site. So if I come down to my site detail and I go to my planning tab, I can now see what are the settings when I run jobs or when I have MRP run. These settings affect every part. One of the crucial ones is do I even process MRP for them? Now I can still have my reschedule, my planning funds, I can have a primary alternate method, but MRP is going to look Look at these settings primarily when it runs if i set it on a class i don't have to manage every site i can turn around and cheat and just look at it as a whole other areas that are going to affect how mrp runs is on the site configuration now site configuration is one if you are multi-site there are also can strength when you run mrp if you are a multi-site installation meaning you have more than one manufacturing plant you would not run run multiple processes for the planning system you want to do this one by one otherwise sub assemblies at some sites may not be made in time for the parent assembly at another site if we're doing a trans so that we don't get site to site issues in our MRP process, we want to make sure that we only run that as one process if we're multi-site. But here on this probably would help if I drag this up to the screen so that everybody can see it. On my site here, I'm going to go ahead and just pull up our main default. I have a planning tab. I can override these settings again. And MRP is going to look at what I have set on the site. In an order of hierarchy, it's going to look at what's on the site. If there's a setting on a part class, it's going to go look at the part class. If I have a setting also on the part, it's going to look at the setting I put on the part. So there is a hierarchy of finding. Even though I have an aluminum class, I may want to have this one part 
work with this type of uh, reschedule settings versus the entire class. You can control that. The further down you go on the hierarchy, the more granularity you end up. Now on the company, there is also an MRP setting. We'll go ahead and pull up company configuration here. Here on the company, when I take a look at the modules inside my company, I'm going to see I have a manufacturing production module. Some of these settings will also impact how MRP runs. So when I turn around and look at this, am I allowed to schedule jobs in the past? Do I want to be able to schedule or have debug logs created? How do I want my jobs identified or indicated? These settings are going to be on a company level. A lot of these settings were moved down to the site configuration when Epicor went to a multi-site truly built in. So making sure that we have the classes, the parts, the sites, or the company set up correctly is definitely going to impact how we run MRP. When MRP runs, MRP comes with a handful of settings that need to be reviewed. When the entire module runs inside I have the ability to run an update recycle threshold. This update recycle threshold looks at the date ranges currently available for each active part revision, only the active revisions. Do I need MRP to evaluate the revision that we don't make anymore? So I want to make sure that I'm looking at the right set of data. So I'm going to want to update this recycle threshold before I even tell MRP to go ahead and run. Another process on the uh, MRP menu is recalculation. What parts are needed to be recalculated? If the part hasn't had activity, do I need to even look at it? If I've never had a sales order, an inventory transaction, or a purchase order affecting that part, do I need MRP to even look at this? I'm going to say probably not. But that MRP recalculation process is going to go evaluate all the parts out there that MRP even needs to look at and make sure that it's looking at the right groupings of parts that we need to process. The next one is our multi-level pegging. Um, do I need to look at the sources of gross requirements for these parts? Primary inventory units are measured or used for this, and that's going to be controlled on the part detail. But it's going to turn around and look, do I even need to go multiple levels down here? Do I need to look at the demand all the way down? And then the other things that are going to be is when we kick off the process, are we doing finite or infinite capacity? A lot of people will come to me and say, all of my jobs got scheduled at 8 o'clock in the morning. Well, that's because we said it is infinite. That means you have infinite resources at that time of the day. Finite says this resource is only available for the hour on the production calendar that I link to it. So when I run MRP, do I want it to schedule based on when my equipment's available or can it put a job anywhere on any day? If I allow the system to put jobs on any day all at the beginning of the day, then it's going to think I can run a million jobs on a Monday. That's going to leave you as a planner to have to go back in and reschedule those jobs manually, move them or load balance that works. If we do a hybrid where some resources are infinite and some are finite, that may yield a better result for your MRP run because it's going to match more what you're doing on the plant floor. Next thing is when you're running MRP, we need to make sure that we have fixed all order and inventory issues that can possibly affect MRP. You would think that Epicor keeps your orders correct. It keeps all of your inventory correct. It's going to make a mistake. We need to plan for this and put that as part of our process. Under the system management module, there are some rebuild processes for manufacturing and distribution, such as fixing my order release quantity. If the order release quantities aren't kept up to date, when you run MRP, it's going to make for the wrong quantity on the order. There is a part bin quantity on hand to reevaluate it from part transaction record. Again, if inventory is not correct, MRP is going to give you a suggestion that's following the garbage data. <clears throat> There's also a refresh part quantities and allocation so that we make sure that all inventory is in sync. If inventory or orders are out of whack, MRP doesn't stand a chance of making your jobs correct. Now, are you going to know there's an issue? Probably not. 
unless you went into time phase and looked at every job that it created one by one. But you want to make sure that inventory and orders are correct and up to date so that when we turn around and run MRP, it's making the jobs for the right quantities that we need. The way that we can cheat with this is Epicor offers you the ability to build a process set. And under system management, there is process set maintenance. I can go in and define a process set and call it nightly MRP, weekly MRP. Now, into that process, I go into Epicor, such as process MRP. Let me see if we can go ahead and pull this up here. So any process, when I turn around and whether it's a report, it's a process, it's posting financials, I can build a process set to automate when those occur. When I go to kick off a process, it's going to ask me in the advance, what schedule do I want to tie that to? I can also save that process set to a process that I define, like nightly MRP. When I create that process set, I would have update recycle threshold, do the MRP recalculation, fix any inventories that are incorrect, then go out and process MRP with these settings, then generate PO suggestion. When I put that process set together, I know that I'm getting a complete run across production, truing up my orders, and then also getting the right purchase suggestions based on the MRP jobs that just got created. But you do have to save each process to a process set. So when I look at one of these processes out here, we'll pull a few up just to make sure that we see one that has more than one. Yeah, we were hoping we would find one. <clears throat> each process that we add to a set located here. That process can then be moved in order to say, run the update recycle threshold first, run the calculate MRP or recalculate MRP second, process MRP. I can control the order that these go. The nice part is, is Epicor will kick them off in the system agent one after the other. So you don't have to log back in and say, oh, I'm ready to run the MRP process, kick it off. Oh, I'm done with MRP, go kick off PO suggestions. The process set will tell the system to execute them in sequence in order of how you want them done. One thing when building a process set is make sure with IT, you're not telling MRP to run at the same time they're doing a physical backup of the server or they have a planned outage. That will cause a problem. So I would say still double check with IT before you put your process set out there to make sure that you're not overlapping with somebody else. Once you build that process set and we kick it off, MRP is just going to run for you. Well, we hope. Other times it's going to fail. And I'm going to say everybody else has had MRP fail for them at some point or another. Knowing how to debug that is also just as crucial. The MRP process will create a log file. All of the log files are sitting up on the server in the Epicor data companies folder. The MRP process will tell me what were the settings when I ran the process MRP and what was all of the uh, processes that were kicked off during that. After that master process runs, it's going to go ahead and create MRP jobs and it's going to log every job that it made. That's going to tell us, I'm going to create, look at this part. I'm going to look at its demand. I'm going to look at what requirements it has. I'm going to make a job for it or not, or I'm going to clean up the unfirmed jobs if I don't need them anymore. That's going to be in your MRP job log. The next one is when it creates a job, it's then going to schedule it and put it into your capacity plan. That scheduling log is going to let you know, hey, I found time for this resource on this day at this hour and scheduled it here. Why did Epicor pick the day that it did for the job? Now it's going to look through the engineering behind the part and say, okay, these are the resources and this has to go first, then this, then this when it backwards schedules. Scheduling logs and the MRP job logs are huge. If you're only running MRP for 100 jobs, you can look at each of these files one by one. If you're running MRP for 10,000 parts, you've got 10,000 jobs to go look through. The easiest way to process those scheduling logs or even the MRP job logs is just do a search for the word cannot or the word error. If there's an error in the file, you want to jump to that job and see which job it was. If it cannot meet its due date in the schedule, you want to jump straight to that job and find out 
why did it not need to state? You know, do I need to go reschedule the job manually? Do I need to read the log file and find out exactly what it did? I would say start out with the scheduling log if you can't figure it out from the job. There is an option under the company setting. In the company configuration on the production tab, there is a checkbox that says enable scheduling details. This is a very verbose logging system for the jobs and the operations when it schedules them so that we can see everything that happened. Running this on a day-to-day -day process, I wouldn't recommend turning that on, but if you start seeing your jobs getting scheduled and you can't figure out why Epicor chose what it did, go into the company configuration, turn on this enable detailed schedule so that now when I look at the log file, I can see everything it did and we should be able to figure out why Epicor chose the day and time that it did or why could it not meet my delivery date. A handful of other things I didn't have them in the presentation, but you may want to consider running a generate shop capacity so that your resources are married with the production calendar that an MRP knows where it can put the jobs. My enable scheduling debug log is right here. The include extra details makes it very verbose. Now, when these are also turned on, if you schedule a job manually in job entry or in quick job entry or from the planning workbench, it's going to create a log file. So it's not just for MRP that you can go look at these schedule logs. You can also do that from regular job processes as well. These are the constraints. How to deal with the error I find is just as important as how do you process the thing because it's going to error at some point. We need to know how to handle that and fix it. These are the areas that are going to be all around the process MRP world. What do we have for questions, Madison? Tammy asks, what is the consensus? Does everyone process a full region every night? Tammy, please don't do that. I'm like, if you have a handful of parts that MRP is evaluating, okay, you can run a full region every night. Doing that you need to go in and process your jobs. Now, if MRP is going to make you 200,000 job suggestions, do you have time to process that every morning? That's the question with doing a full regen. It's going to wipe everything out, put a whole new set for you to go work on. If your parts don't change that drastically from day to day, I'm just going to say just do a net change every night and maybe do a full regen on the weekend so that you know Monday morning is going to be rough because you got a lot of jobs to clean up. But doing it on a daily would be really rough, making it. Want more Coda Bears Lunch and Learn? Check out our channel for more videos or contact us on our website for registration information.